Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here. Before we kick off this video, I just wanted to let you know that Alistair and I were invited over to Rowan J. Coleman's channel for an interview video where we talked about Space Dock, The Sojourn, Star Trek, and various other topics. You can find it linked in the description below if you want to check it out. Be sure to subscribe to Rowan's channel, he's got some fantastic content. Originally a type of civilian city ship prior to its appropriation by the Rebel Alliance, the Mon Calamari MC-75 Star Cruiser is one of the largest warships to serve with the Rebellion and has played a role as a capable command ship in some of the most crucial battles of the Galactic Civil War. At a length of 1,204.44 meters, the MC-75 presents the typical curved and bulbous frame of a Mon Calamari cruiser, with its most distinctive feature being a large ventral keel structure that houses the ship's primary command deck. The vessel is propelled by 12 G-Mon 15 sublight ion drives that have been heavily refitted to allow the ship to keep pace with slow cruising fighter escorts. The vessel carries a crew of 3,225, including deck officers, engineering crews, tacticians, and Alliance Marines. The standard MC-75 frame is armed with 20 rapid-action point-defense laser cannons, 12 ship-to-ship -ship turbo laser batteries, 4 ion cannons, and 12 proton torpedo tubes. This provides a moderate but versatile arsenal that can pose a lethal threat to lighter Imperial vessels and reasonably contend with larger warships when properly coordinated. The MC-75 is a very defensively oriented craft, able to resist attacks from large wings of strike craft using its point-defense weapons and endure damage direct fire from capital-grade warships for extended periods thanks to its powerful shields and armour. While in service to the Alliance, two sub-variants of the MC-75 were developed for use across more specialised mission profiles. The MC-75 armoured cruiser carried inferior ship-to-ship -ship batteries, but vastly improved point defence weapons, as well as modular turret mounts, while the MC-75 ordnance cruiser was loaded with a large supply of additional missiles and torpedoes. The MC-75 features a large ventral docking bay beneath her primary hull. This can be configured to carry wings of strike craft or gunships, but is frequently loaded with a single CR-90 Corellian Corvette. This expands the MC-75's mission profile by allowing the vessel to project firepower over a wider area, and also serves as a means of evacuation should the Star Cruiser suffer mortal damage. Perhaps the most well-known example of the MC-75 Star Cruiser was the flagship of Admiral Radus, the Profundity. In its original role as an underwater city ship, the Profundity was used as the governance tower of the city of Nistilum, from which Radus himself had served as the city's mayor. The vessel escaped Mon Cala along with numerous other craft while fleeing Imperial subjugation, and integrated into the existing navy of the Rebel Alliance. The Profundity acted as the Alliance's command ship during the pivotal Battle of Scarif and coordinated rebel forces in attacks against the Star Destroyers Intimidator and Persecutor. While engaging the Imperial Flotilla, the Profundity also guided and supported Alliance forces on the planet's surface and received the crucial transmission from Rogue One containing the plans for the Empire's Death Star. During the battle, the tactics employed by Admiral Radus resulted in the successful destruction of two Imperial Star Destroyers as well as allowing both the Death Star plans and a sizable portion of the Alliance fleet to escape the engagement zone. Sadly, the Profundity itself was crippled under turbo laser fire following the unexpected arrival of the Star Destroyer Devastator, and fell victim to a lethal boarding action in which all remaining hands were lost. Following Scarif and Yavin, ships of the MC-75 class continued to serve with the Rebellion, but the ship's greatest contribution was to lay the groundwork for the new MC-80 Star Cruiser varieties. These larger vessels maintained many of the design aspects of the MC-75, but expanded upon them, and provided the Rebellion with a range of striking capital ships that would become well-known symbols of the Alliance. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.